affect you. When Russia melted down Chernobyl, it affected Sweden. Therefore, Sweden shouldn't have had a say in an opening. He was told to shut up because what he found was impossible. In other words, the dose was again too low. The same in Belarus and the Ukraine, where my colleague Alevsky, uh, Alexei Yabalokov, Y-A-B-L-O-K-O-V, was collected together an enormous compilation of peer-reviewed evidence of appalling effects. Most recently, we see the Hiroshima-based denials in the case of thyroid cancer in Fukushima. The study groups for the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, it's a probe assembled in 1950, Thus, there were five years in which those who were badly affected by the radiation could die. They'd already passed on, so they didn't count in the study. The study was a healthy survivor group, something which the late Dr. Alice Stewart demonstrated. In other words, you see how they skewed that? They, they waited five years so that the numbers would come down in their favor. It says it's not the worst accusation. There were roughly 109,000 individuals recruited, including six dose groups from 0 to 200 RAD, and two not in city groups, the 4,607 early entrants and 21,915 late entrants. Again, test groups. These NIC groups should have been the controls, but they were not. If you look at the reports, you find that they were abandoned as being too healthy. The final exposure groups were defined by how they were, how far they were from the detonation. In other words, that isn't that wasn't the most uh, accurate way to test it for the reason I just gave you. All groups were exposed to residual radioactivity from the bombs. The U.S. and ABCC denied and still denies this, but it's true. They were exposed to residual radioactivity from the bombs. There were internal exposures to all groups, whatever their external dose had been. They were never tested inside. Internal is much worse. Uh, look at the uh, movie Silkwood or read her biography. Uranium, a genetic poison. What's it do? It targets the DNA, the building blocks of life. The origin of the black rain, which contained uranium-235 and uranium-238, and particularly uranium-234, which is the missing exposure and is probably responsible for most of the cancer effects in all survivors. We know that the uranium was there because it was measured by Japanese scientists in 1983. A recently declassified U.S. document tabulates the enormous U-234 content of the enriched uranium used in bombs, code name Oloroi, or Oroloi. The uranium nanoparticles in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki black rain were available for inhalation by the exposure groups in the ruins of Hiroshima for years after the bomb. And again, how many of you remember the black goo that's all over Tokyo? It's called a melt out when it happens that way, by the way. All the bombs were made of uranium, about one ton per megaton yield. For all those tests in Nevada, the Marshall Islands, Kazakhstan, Christmas Island, the results were the same. Down came nanoparticles to be inhaled by anyone nearby and distant. You inhale it into your lungs and it, it affects your health. It, 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 it gives off these microscopic explosions that mutate your cells and that turns into cancer along with uh, other things. It affects your heart, it affects your uh, weight, it affects a number of things the way you process sugars. Why does this matter, he asks. The new research has been carried out on uranium. We find that uranium targets DNA through the chemical affinity. This causes terrible and anomalous genetic damage out of all proportion to its dose, as calculated by the ICRP. Other fallout components also bind chemically to DNA, including strontium-90 and barium-140. Um... Again, look at his work on a calcium and how what you can do to protect uh, from some of the damage uh, by taking calcium because strontium is related to it and it mimics it. But are you seeing what he's saying here? The, the doses of what the, the, uh, the people that are saying it's safe at the ICRP are saying it's not safe because of the way uranium acts and reacts with other things in the body. It says, those exposed who are uranium miners, thank you, Queen of England, Gulf veterans, test veterans, DU civilians, that would be depleted uranium in weapons, nuclear uranium workers, nuclear site downwinders, all suffer chromosome damage, K 
cancer, leukemia, heart disease, the works. The works. All this is published as are results of laboratory and theoretical studies showing mechanisms. But in the Lancet, nothing. Of course, not safe. All, all, the, all these sources I've given you, they all made it up out of whole cloth. They became doctors for nothing. S.L. Simon and A. Balvor, who wrote the article on the health effects of the nuclear testing, did not even mention uranium there, nor in their EPIC 2010 study of the Marshall Islands exposure. The Nevada site data they used for the baseline calculations ignored it totally. In other words, they'll test for cesium, they'll test for the... They weren't testing for uranium because they knew exactly what they were going to find and it was going to show the truth and they couldn't have the truth. They had to have the lies. In 2012, I made a presentation, he writes, for the Marshall Islanders at the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, attacking the Simon et al. analysis. In their Lancet nuclear test article, Simon and Balvoral major on iodine effects. So let's look at those. Scientific evidence from Fukushima, massive excess in thyroid cancers, again, caused by the radioactive iodine to tie this all together. Listen. In Fukushima Prefecture, surveys have confirmed 103 thyroid cancers in 380,000 18-year-olds. 25 or so are still being checked out, so there could be more. The Lancet article by Wakeford it presents an excess relative risk cold from the Hiroshima studies of 0.6 per sievert. In the very same issue, the maximum thyroid dose was given as 18 m sieverts with a medium dose of 0.67 m sieverts. So in two years of screening, if everyone screened got the maximum thyroid dose of 18 m sieverts, we should expect an increase of 0.08 times 0.06 equaling 0.011, which would be, of course, a 1.1 increase in the background rate. This background is about 1 per 100,000 per year, or 7.6 in two years and 380,000. So the radiation sh should increase this to 7.7 cases. That would be one extra case in 10 years. There are about 103. That is 95 more cases than expected. An error in the ICRP model of 95 over 0.14, which would be 678-fold. That is, there is 678 times more thyroid cancer than the Hiroshima-based ICRP model predicts. They were wrong by 678 times. The calculation is based on what was written in Lancet, but nobody made the calculation. This, on, this own should show the authorities and the public that the game is up. But instead of doing the simple calculation, another article in The Lancet written by Jeff Watts praises the work of those at Fukushima Medical University who are busy telling everyone that the increases in thyroid cancer cannot be caused by the radiation. How, how dumb do they think people are? In other words, once again, the predictions from the Hiroshima are believed rather than the evidence that is right in front of their eyes. It's kind of a mass hypnosis, or maybe not. And lastly, finally, someone is trying to get to the truth of the matter. In case you think that all of this mad stuff, there, in case you think this is all mad stuff, there does at least seem to be some measure of concern evolving in the area of the internal radiation, though no one at the Lancet articles mentions it. The European Union Radiation Research Organization, Melody, has finally moved into action led by the French Radiation Protection Agency, IRSN. The matter was raised by me, he writes, at the inaugural Melody Conference in Paris in 2011, but nothing seemed to develop. I said that there are likely to be dose estimation problems associated with internal exposure, that is inside of you, and to nucleides which bind to DNA, and particularly uranium, that this potentially falsified the Hiroshima risk model. A hugely expensive European research project has now been proposed. It is CURE. Concerted Uranium Research Europe. In the report launching this development in March of 2015, the authors wrote a large-scale integrated collaborative project will be proposed to improve the characterization of the biological and health effects associated with uranium internal contamination in Europe. 
In the future, it might be envisaged. It might be envisaged, envisaged to extend the collaborations with other countries outside the European Union, to apply the proposed approach to other internal emitters and other exposure situations of internal contamination. In other words, other ways that this gets to you. In the future, Hiroshima should not be remembered just for destruction of its inhabitants, but also for being the flag for the epidemical cover-up of the biggest public health scandal in all of human history, whose victim number the hundreds of millions in cancer death, miscarriages, infant deaths, loss of fertility, and the introduction of gesomic instability on all creatures living on the earth. It's changed the DNA and genetic makeup of everything, for the worse. Let us pray that we will not be allowed to sanction the final nuclear exchange or the mistaken prediction that such an event could be winnable. I know that been a little bit long, but Chris Busby completely on point there, friends, in every way. Um, this is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. You can look him up at Facebook.com, M-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Iran made illegal purchases of nuclear weapons technology last month. I have said since the beginning that this is not a matter of Jew or Arab. It's not a matter of the Jews got a nuclear power plant. We shouldn't get one. Yeah. Shut your turban up. Listen, you can't have a nuclear power plant there because it is seismically scientific fact that you are going to experience an earthquake there somewhere around the massive scale that you saw in Fukushima. And we all know that the shaking caused some of the meltdowns at Fukushima. Therefore, this is going to bring more grief upon Iran than any number of Jewish anything could do or anybody else. The other problem here, though, is that Iran is extremely untrustworthy, and you don't always, you don't always hear that. It's not politically correct to say, well, at Weekly Standard, listen to this. The question is not whether Iran can be trusted to uphold the nuclear deal that is now being negotiated in Vienna, because it can't. But whether the Obama administration and its P5 plus 1 partners can be trusted to punish Iran when it violates the agreement. Experience shows that unless Iran violates the deal egregiously, the temptation will be just to ignore it. And we, we, know, we know where that's going to go. For instance, Iran got away with selling more oil than it should have under the interim agreement. More ominously, Tehran repeatedly pushed the envelope on technical aspects of the agreement, such as caps on its uranium stockpile, and they got away with it. The Obama administration and other Western powers have so much invested in the diplomatic efforts that they'll deny such violations ever occurred. And you can see, by the way, that Obama is handling ISIS, that at the very least he is an uh, Islamic sympathizer. And the problem with that is... Dying of thirst, excuse me. The problem with that isn't that your average Islamist is a problem. But the leader of these countries are a huge problem. And we have a president that's helping them with this insanity. More evidence of Iranian violations has now surfaced. Two reports regarding Iran's attempts to illicitly and clandestinely procure technology for its nuclear and ballistic missiles programs has been recently published. They show that Iran's procurement continues apace, if not faster than before, to joint plan of action was signed in November 2013. Fear of potentially embarrassing negotiators and derailing negotiations made some states reluctant to report it. In other words, they caught Iran cheating, and the countries in the P1 plus 5 did not want to admit that they were, uh, they were wrong in trusting Iran, so they just ignored the fact that it happened. Let's we'll pretend that Iran is trustworthy, right? Keep, keep repeating the party line because you're an idiot. The first report linked to it here was released last month by the UN. The panel on experts in charge of reporting compliance with the UN Security Council resolutions regarding Iran. The panel noted that UN member states had not reported significant violations of UN sanctions and speculated as to why. Either Iran was complying, or countries did not wish to interfere with negotiations. In other words, just let Iran, you know, go, on, go ahead with this. We can trust them, even though they're already cheating and lying. The second report, released last week by Germany's domestic intelligence agency, is less ambiguous. 
The agency, the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution, confirmed to us that Iran continues to seek illicit technology for its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. They are looking for ways to put nuclear technology on a bomb, and they have been caught in this report. So quit telling me how much you can tr trust Iran, because obviously we have proof right here that you cannot. Iran has had a long history of trying to obtain nuclear technology from German companies, particularly by seeking ways to transport merchandise in circumvention of international sanctions. In other words, the things that got the Lusitania sank. Um, go ahead and, uh, you know, we'll call it regular cargo. Ship us over some uh, nuclear materials for our bombs. Don't tell anybody. Since November 2013, Tehran has sought industry computers, high-speed cameras, cable fiber and pumps for its nuclear and missile programs. It appears that Iran's readiness to negotiate does not reflect any substantive policy change. Rather, rather it is a diplomatic tactic, a retreat forced by economic distress, not a strategic rethinking of its priorities. Iran's cheating should give Western, that would be us, negotiators additional resolve to impose ironclad guarantees in the agreement. You know we're not even allowed to spot check them? You know that? They should compel Iran to reveal its past activities, including its post-JPOA procurement efforts, and impose tough, intrusive, anytime, anywhere inspections before sanctions are suspended, much less lifted. And of course, instead, last week we find out that, uh, reporting to the UN, despite evidence of cheating and lack of resolve, it looks as though they're going to get to uh, move ahead with this ridiculous notion. It, it, it's mind-numbing mind how evil this regime is and people want to give them a nuclear or anything they shouldn't be allowed to operate a car battery uh, rt.com two million people in california midwest drink uranium contaminated water let's hear again how the bomb testing didn't hurt anything i wondered if anybody could tell me that uh that we're not getting any effects from these uh, power plants just listen to this Almost 2 million people in California and the Midwest live on the aquifer sites, which have 180 times the safe level of uranium, according to a recent study by U.S. researchers. 180 times higher. Do you know how deadly uranium is? Do you know a speck of plutonium that would fit on the head of a pin could poison an entire apartment complex? Do you know that? Some 275,000 groundwater samples were taken for evaluation, and it turns out that many Americans live about a kilometer from wells that are uranium polluted. Scientists from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln discovered. Hey, you didn't hear that on the news, right? It doesn't matter. It's just uranium. We just heard what uranium did. The 20-minute Chris Busby thing I just gave you? Here you go. 180 times higher. In case you think it only affected Europe and the Middle East. 78% of the pollution comes from nitrate, the contaminator deriving from chemical fertilizers and animal waste. Nitrates oxidize uranium, making it soluble in groundwater. Yeah, nothing to do with the nuke industry. Nah, not at all. The aquifer is onto a rich soil layer, which is fertilized by nitrates. Yeah, I get nothing to do with uh, any of the bomb testing that happened there. Nothing to do with any nuclear power plants. I wanted to touch on it, though, so that it wasn't glossed over and you can understand uh, how dreadful this is and friends we've gone long today this brings us to the dumdy of the day and yes fukushima does in fact have a dumdy of the day uh remember you can donate to the show at the correct views at hotmail.com where every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show and uh, these things can be expensive to do because of all of the uh, time it takes for me to research these friends the dumdy of the day let me get our dumdy music up Oh, yeah, listen to this. Come on, computer, come on. USGS scientists, major quake on Hayward Fault expected any day now. You'll see why I mentioned this as a, the dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day here in a second. Uh, you, you don't get it yet, but trust me, you will. Um, that was an awful fade. San Francisco, CBSSocial.com. I hate this site. It's so clunky. It takes forever to scroll or move. Oh, now it wants to refresh. You can always count on uh, major news networks to do these kinds of annoying things. Uh, we've been told it's safe. Don't worry. It's safe. It's safe. It's safe. 
we have an earthquake about to happen here that is going to absolutely change damn near everything as we know it in the sight of these power plants that are in the area. When this happens, and it's not a matter of if, I mean, we, we seismologists have told, told us forever there is no if, there's when. You have all these pro-nuke people out here who get the dumb deal of the day, by the way, saying how we need this for the, the good of global warming. What good is any of that if you have poisoned all of life to a far greater degree than any global warming would do? As Rush Limbaugh likes to say, anything for the caribou. Well, let me ask you a question. How does it help the mighty caribou if there is an earthquake of this magnitude that we're talking about here at Xfinity.com on this fault line? And it does the damage that we, we know that we saw the earthquakes do in Japan. I guess I want to say in closing, as we close the day one here of the mass of Fukushima update, that this isn't the only fault line where this is looking at. And they're discovering more fault lines all the time. And we're finding out that the earth is a lot less stable than it has been for the last few hundred years that we've been able to test it properly. And that that's putting our new plants at risk. It's putting you listening to this at risk. Friends, I've been going on for about an hour. And we've got the dumb of the day here. We've got the facts for you. Hit share. Let people know we're out here. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Let them know that you support what we're doing here. And you're helping us and keeping us going. Because, friends, if more people do not wake up to the mess that we have here, then there's not going to be any reason for us to worry about whether or not driving your car warms the planet, which we know that it doesn't. What we're going to be looking at is an extinction event that uh, hasn't been seen by anyone at any time, I mean, human-wise. I mean, the last time anything like this happened was the dinosaurs. So, friends, that's the facts as we know them. Please share the video, and I'll be back with day two of this. Uh, good night. God bless.